It was 1957 when America fired our first rockets at the moon. For a moment, it looked like America was going to beat the Russians and be the first nation into space. Thousands watched as the countdown commenced. It was thrilling. It was inspiring. It was also a complete and total failure. It would be almost a decade before Americans would get to go to the moon. But one film would take us to outer space before NASA. 2001, A Space Odyssey. 2001 is just one hell of a movie. I first saw the film when I was 17 years old, and I thought it was at once exciting confusing, a little boring, and inspiring. These are the exact feelings that were shared by viewers when the film came out in 1968. 2001 was panned by critics and met with confusion by mass audiences who may have been expecting some kind of exciting, grand space adventure, but instead got a demanding, slow, cerebral film. But, love it or hate it, 2001 is one of the most influential and important films ever made. So, just give me a few minutes of your time, and let's go back to take a look at 2001. The movie begins with a prologue to end all prologues. The scene is called The Dawn of Man, and in it, we see not men, but apes. What would eventually become mankind at the moment is nothing more than a pack of savage animals fighting with nature in order to survive. This all changes with the arrival of a black monolith. At first the apes are scared of this mysterious object. They wish to attack it, but then something strange happens. The apes move from a sense of fear to curiosity, and they begin to examine the object and possibly even begin to think about the object. It's as if the monolith has triggered the ape's capacity to think. This will culminate in one of the most celebrated scenes in the film, involving an ape and a bone. Movies are made by combining various elements such as sound, music, images, and editing together in order to create an idea. In this scene, we see a very specific choice of editing, sound, and imagery. They're all working together to illustrate mankind's first idea. The ape realizes that he can use the bone of dead animals as a tool or as a weapon. From this realization, we will use technology to move from being primitive apes to being thinking men. With one cut, the film shows the evolution of technology from the primitive bone to the advanced satellites of the future. This is the Odyssey of 2001 A Space Odyssey. This movie is attempting to chronicle mankind's journey from ape to human to what potentially lies beyond. What I mean when I call this a boring movie, I mean that during the second act of 2001, not much is happening. This is where I think the film loses a lot of viewers. The film shows in painstaking detail the nuances of life in the future. What people in the future eat, how they travel, how they communicate. This is not the filmmaker simply being pretentious. I think the movie adopts this pacing and rhythm in order to trigger a thought process in the viewer. 
I don't think we're simply just supposed to watch 2001 passively. We're supposed to think about it and question the film as we watch it. Let's think about this. In one sequence, we see a miniature version of contemporary life. We see a man going through his exercise routine on his rotating spaceship. Now, there's not much happening in this shot, and it goes on forever. As the shot continues, and if we really contemplate the image, we see a man who is running in a circle like a mouse in a cage. So, man has advanced his technology, but he himself is still just an animal, and has not advanced much since their first encounter with the monolith. This is what I admire about 2001. It's a film that trusts its audience's intelligence, but it's also a film that teaches you how to watch it. Hello, Hal, do you read me? Do you read me, Hal? Affirmative, Dave. I read you. Open the pod bay doors, Hal. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. One of the most interesting characters in 2001 is HAL 9000. HAL is a computer whose voice is provided by actor Douglas Rain. HAL's only distinguishing physical characteristic is a single red light on a camera. Many 2001 fans have pointed out that the letters that make up HAL's name, H-A-L, are only one letter off from the computer company I-B. In. One of the many ironies of the film is, even though HAL 9000 is a machine, he's a machine that suffers from human emotions. In this case, it's paranoia. HAL's paranoia triggers him to kill the ship's crew and even trap Dave Bowman outside the ship. In 2001, it seems that the human characters act like computers and the computers act like humans. The standoff between Dave and HAL is the most pivotal scene in the movie. The technology man has created has now turned against him, and man must rely on his instincts and his intelligence in order to survive, just as he did in the film's prologue. Dave's space pod resembles some kind of humanoid object, where it looks like he's carrying a wounded person back to some kind of shelter. When Dave uses his creativity to project himself into the ship, it's like a shot of emotion or a shot of energy has entered into the cold world of 2001. It's almost as if the fight with HAL 9000 has rehumanized Dave Bowman. Next we have the death of HAL 9000. I love this scene as much as any film lover can love any scene in a movie. The scene is bathed in a beautiful red light. HAL's voice is soft and conversational. It really conveys the machine's sense of fear. We're looking at a murder here. And, like most people when they die, and, like most humans, when Hal dies, he reverts back to childhood. Give me your answer, do. I'm half crazy. All for the love. It won't be 2001 climaxes with Dave entering the monolith and being transported somewhere. At this point in the story, I would offer you an interpretation of the film's climax. But the truth is, I have no idea what this scene means. Some people feel that the monolith is an alien gateway that transports Dave to another world. Others think that the monolith takes Dave to a distant future. Others think he has simply died and gone to heaven. There is no definitive answer, and this may be the key to understanding the image of the star child that ends the movie. There's no definitive answer because the future is unknown, it's unwritten, and open to every possibility. I know that 2001 has an enormous reputation to live up to, but like I said, I think it's one hell of a movie, and it's definitely going to be a film that's around for a very, very long time. Thanks for listening.